Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and I have a very odd yet true statement. Swedish House Mafia is back with their debut album. Back with the debut album? How does that make any sense? Well, Swedish House Mafia came out with tons of tracks back in the early 2000s, but uh, it wasn't an album. Until now, it's technically a compilation. And so this, Paradise Again, is Swedish House Mafia's debut album after being on the scene for over 10 years. It is crazy. It is here, just over an hour long, 17 minutes, and we are going to react to every single track. I got myself some drinks over to the side, and we're going to have a fun time. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to skip all the nonsense and hop into it. Here is Time with Mape? Ma Mape? I don't know how to say it. Here is Time. Okay, uh, Time featuring Mape? Mapai? Mape? I don't know. Uh, great opener. Um, you know, there's a bit of a sustain at the beginning that doesn't fade in, it kind of just goes, which makes me believe, uh, considering the name of the album as well, Paradise Again, that we might have a whole looping album. Uh, I would love to see that, so we'll see at the very end track with For You if it's going to loop back to the beginning, um, which I have a suspicion it might, um, just based off of just the, uh, you don't hear songs just kind of start with a sustain that's just like there right away, it normally like leads in in some capacity, so. Uh, great track, um, sounds very Rufus to Soul like. Uh, it sounds a lot like Rufus to Soul, um, so it's got like a kind of um, a like progressive deep house style to it. It's kind of a mix of um, both to some extent, more leaning into deep house. Um, but uh, great track. Uh, it is it is very it is very Swedish House Mafia like. It's it's very much their style of um, a simplistic vocal uh, with a nice uh, kind of light hearted, not too intense drop, and then the second drop uh, is a little expanded. It's not and it's not anything crazy. It's very similar to the first drop, just more like a an expanded note, an expanded uh, refrain of, in some capacity. So, um, great first track. Uh, so let's uh, let's keep this thing moving. Uh, here is T Heaven Takes You Home featuring Connie Constance. Here we go. Wow. Okay. Uh, taking it real clear at the end with those vocals, um, which I kind of wanted a little more of that throughout the rest of the. Uh, the rest of the track, because um, it was a little, vocals were a little hard to understand. Uh, I went to look at the lyrics at the end just so I could have a little more clarity in what uh, was being sung. But um, I have a suspicion that this album is going to be wildly consistent. I, I shouldn't have said wildly before. And it's going to be very consistent uh, in terms of it's going to be, uh, we're going to get a lot of this style track um, with uh, just with great production quality and not a whole ton of... Um, I want to say dynamicism of track list. It's not going to, we're not going to get like a trap banger or a dubstep banger here. Obviously, I mean, it's Switch House Mafia, but uh, I think we're going to, we're going to get pretty, we know what we're going to get with this album, I think for the most part, uh, which isn't a bad thing. And I'm not saying it as a bad thing. I'm saying it as a, as a, I kind of know what to expect, I think for the most part. So uh, first two tracks, good. Uh, they're solid. Um, I'm excited to hear what the rest of this track list or what the rest of the album is going to sound like. Um, but, uh, so, so far good. Uh, not, not standout tracks, nothing too insane as of right now, but, uh, still solid. So, uh, let's head into what seems like an interlude of sorts. Uh, Jacob's Note featuring Jacob Mulrad, who did, uh, the one something thing. So I bet Jacob Mulrad is a composer, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Mulrad, I think is how you say that. But, uh, here we go. Here's Jacob's Note. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so it's Moth to Flame. It's a song that we've all heard a million bajillion times, so I'm not gonna say a ton about it. I already did a whole react to it. Um, uh, I think the song is great. Uh, it is a solid uh, commercial appeal style track from Swedish House Mafia. Um, and this really, the song is gonna propel the album to uh, greater popularity, uh, more so than anything else, for sure. So uh, yeah, I, it's, a, it's a solid song. Uh, nothing else to really say about it that hasn't been said at this point. Um, it's just, uh, I, I really enjoy it and it, it, so far it fits really well on the track list. So, uh, we'll see what the rest of these songs sound like, sound like. Uh, so here we go. This is track number five, Mafia. Wow. Man, that was different. Um, that was destructive. Uh, that really does sound like it's straight out of like a movie soundtrack. Uh, I said Dune at first, but I really feel like a Christopher Nolan type thing from that. Like, I feel like that's a, uh, a climactic part from like a, 
feels like it's set in like Tenet or something like that, like Christopher Nolan. Um, damn, that was... We're going to see some uh, cool videos come out of this. Uh, it, it's one of these like kind of... Um, I want to say like B-style tracks from uh, an album where it's not super popular, but uh, you hear it in like these commercials or in like some weird abstract, like crazy cool video. And you're like, oh, what is this? And you're like, oh, it's Swedish House Mafia. You're like, oh, it's from this album. And so I think this one's, I think you're going to see this in a lot of media. Uh, I think this, uh, this is going to pop it up in other places. That is, uh, that, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I was a huge fan. So I'm excited to see where that's going to be next. I'm calling it. I'm calling this one's going to be really popular in some media area other than uh, like from the album, like in some commercial or some YouTube video that goes popular or something. It's yeah, that's my that's my prediction for Mafia. So uh, up next, though, uh, track six featuring ASAP Rocky Frankenstein, the only explicit track from the project. Uh, here we go. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mafia to Frankenstein. Holy crap. That song, those two do not let up. Um, those were, <laughs> like I said before, destructive tracks. Um, I I really enjoyed that one. I'm, I'm a fan of Frank. I love the greedy takes like that. Uh, and uh, I really feel like ASAP was uh, imploring his, his inner uh, Tyler, the creator, which I mean, he mentioned it off the top. Um, and it was so funny. I was about to say, I was about to say like, oh, that's a bit of a cheesy line. Um, and then it said, I bet you hit the line. I was like, oh, okay. So I guess it's somewhat self-conscious, but does that mean it's good or whatever? But um, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a lot going on, on that track. Uh, the chorus doesn't even feel like a chorus. Um, it feels like it's just, it kind of just drones the whole time and nothing really goes on, which I, I kind of like that. It's kind of just, it's dark and brooding and it's just mean. Um, so Fan, I'm a fan. Uh, I like it. So we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, the track list is in a very, very dark place right now. Uh, that's why I'm surprised it gets better isn't at the track list now or isn't at this point. I feel like it would slot in here well, but uh, let's see. Uh, Don't Go Mad featuring uh, Sanabo Say. Here we go. Wow. That, uh, that really felt like the most Daft Punk-esque track of the whole thing so far. Um, just the way the song progressed and moved through the different elements, uh, it really did feel like a mix between like, uh, like Contact from Random Access Memories and I want to say Superheroes from Discovery. Um, maybe even Crescendals in there. Um, not Virgis Q. Q. But yeah, it really did feel like there was, um, uh, it felt like a Daft Punk homage to some extent. Uh, even the end of those really, uh, that really high pitched, um, uh, oh, what do you call it? Rise, the high pitched rise. It felt very contact-esque, uh, just the finale to Daft Punk's Random Access Memories. Um, so yeah, that felt like an homage to Daft Punk of anything, um, but uh, who knows? It, it just, it felt like an, an old school kind of almost disco style uh, track with a with modern quality to it. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely, I definitely did. So uh, we're going to move into, though, the title track of the album, uh, Paradise, again. Really interesting track. I'm surprised that they... Um, well, I'm not surprised they have like an interlude at the be at the middle half of the project, um, but the fact that it's the title track and it's just kind of like an interlude, it doesn't really even feel like a single in any capacity. I, w I wouldn't, I wouldn't really listen to this song individually. Um, obviously, all songs have their like other elements to it, but I feel like it's just it just feels like it slots in so much better into the tra into a track list rather than just by itself. So. Um, shocked uh shocked like it's not a bad song i just i wouldn't listen to it by itself which i'm just so surprised that they named the title track that i just feel like that's such an odd i don't know if i've seen a ton of artists ever do that so i mean props to them um it's just it just feels backwards to me i don't know i don't know why i'm so caught up on this but um <laughs> yeah that's all i really have to say about it uh let's move on to <laughs> the second most popular song so far, uh, Lifetime with Ty Dolla Sign and 070 Shake. Here we go. Okay, Lifetime. Uh, that was the song I was most impressed on on first listen, 100%. Uh, I still love it. It's probably going to be, if not, one of my favorites from the album. 
I just something about it just exudes energy and exudes the feeling of that I or I want to feel it from Swedish House Mafia. Uh, I I actually really liked Ty Dolla Sign and No Seven No Shakes uh, features on the the track. Um, yeah, I mean I did a reaction to this earlier too, and so you can see my genuine reaction if you want to see uh, back then. Uh, maybe maybe I put a card up here. Maybe if I remembered correctly, um, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the track and uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. It just, it, it feels like one of those singles that is just, it's just great. Uh, it's it's just good. It just has tons of life. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, that's really, it, it doesn't stay too long. It's only three minutes. And so it kind of hits you hard and then keeps you wanting more. And so that's, uh, that's, that's sometimes that's needed in, in the music. So in the music. Uh, up next uh, is the, I believe, the third longest song from the track list, uh, Calling On. Here we go. Uh, that's one of the ones that I think is a little bit more generic uh, from the rest of the track list. It feels like it. it's a really, I don't want to say wannabe old school, but like it really has those um, old school undertones, which a lot of the project actually does. Uh, a lot of the vocal features have those kind of old nostalgic um, like vintage sounding vocalists. I, I, I think that makes sense to some extent. Uh, it's like they're, it's not as the vocals aren't like crisp and clear and super clean. They feel like they're a little more old school. They're a little more nostalgic. I guess the best way to put, best way to put it, like think of the end of, um, what was it? Uh, Heaven Takes You Home. I think it was that one where it like gets, it gets clearer and clearer and then the last second like it's super clear. You're not getting that with the rest of the tracks, um, with the rest of the vocalists. So and that's not a bad thing, uh, but that one just feels like, a little long, uh, a little on the long end for me. Um, I, I did enjoy it though. Uh, there's, it just isn't, there isn't a whole ton to go back to on that track. This is, um, this is the first time in the album where I'm like, okay, it's starting, it's losing a little bit of steam, uh, just a little bit. But that being said, it gets better um, and Red Light are coming up soon. But uh, before then we've got Home. Okay, here is the next track, Home. <laughs> Okay, uh, another one that kind of just felt like it was, don't know why that one's on the album, not gonna lie, that one felt a little more unneeded, a little like we're losing steam. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that one just felt like it was just, it just happened. I don't really, I like, I really have no opinions on that track. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, but we are going to move on to two tracks that I already know I enjoy in It Gets Better and Red Light. Here we go. I must say that was a triumphant return to EDM. Uh, that track was, I mean, when it first came out, I just, whoo, I was all over it. Um, what a fun song it is. It, yeah. I'm so happy that one even just exists because uh, just the context of that being Sweet House Mafia's first song in what, 10 years, nine years. Uh, it, oh, and then just the final uh, grandiose, triumphant, who, uh, it's just like, a, oh my gosh, it's like they're back. And it's just like, it just, you lose your mind. So uh, huge, huge fan of that track. Um, another one of my favorites. I mean, it is one of the singles. And so I, I really do enjoy it. Uh, speaking of songs, I really enjoy Red Light uh, featuring Sting. Uh, who redid the vocals for uh, The Police's Roxanne, which I learned after I did my initial reaction. But uh, here is Red Light. Uh, Red Light. It is an earworm. It is catchy. It has some, again, nostalgic tones with, I mean, this is really bringing it back. Like it literally has nostalgia within it because um, Roxanne is a very popular police track and that's what the vocals are from uh, or uh, what's his name? Sting re-recorded it for this track. Uh, so again, just just harping on those kind of nostalgic vibes. Um, Sweet House Mafia, uh, trying to get that older demographic in. So uh, fantastic song. If you want to see my full review, it was in the card somewhere there or something like that. Um, you can see it there. But uh, we are moving on. Final four tracks. Uh, can you feel it? Here we go. I, I, that was weird. That just felt, <laughs> I don't know what that song was. That was, uh, something. I, I really, I, 
I I mean, I'll give it points for being different. It just was weird. I really don't know what to say about that song. Like that was, for some reason, my mind was just like lost. Like it was just like deadpan in that song. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next one though. This is uh, this is 1930. Um, yeah, 19.30, here we go. Another just strange track. Like, what is up with the endings here? Like, this is where is this album going? Where is this finale going? I'm, I'm so confused. It is just, it, I, I don't. Like, that is just such a strange track. Like, it's not, it's not bad. Like, it's, it's not bad. It's just different. And again, different isn't bad. It's just my, <laughs> my description for these things are not going good. Like I'm, I'm not, I feel like I'm descending into madness sort of like, I don't know what is happening. It just, the, the song's just getting like, they're getting weirder and stranger and more off the beaten path and a little more out there, but with not really any real cohesion to the rest of the track list, but they're also sounding good. And it's just, I, I'm, I'm honestly lost what is happening at the end of this album. Um, there really is no, it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. It doesn't feel like there's any cohesive uh, thematics or motifs musically, sonically. Um, and definitely not narratively because it really isn't a narrative. So uh, <laughs> we got two tracks left. We'll see what happens here. Uh, but here, uh, here we go. This is um, Another Minute. Okay, another minute. Um, this is one of the more like, honestly, like serene, like feel good tracks. It's a lot more down than the rest of the album. It doesn't have that kind of brooding bass line in it. And it just kind of, it, it it's goes. And it's a little more of a linear track. It's not as deep. It's not as um, high. And it kind of just is like a, uh, almost like a farewell style track. It's just like a, this is the end. Like we're coming to a conclusion. We're coming to a culmination of the finale. And uh, it, seems like it's building into something bigger so we'll see what for you is like but um yeah just a just a kind of solid track nothing too crazy going on there but uh uh here we go this is the final track of paradise again for you i generally thought i was gonna fade into the first song I, my prediction was wrong but Okay, uh, for you, a great little finale track. Uh, again, this one and another minute are not like the rest of the track list. Um, they have a little bit more of a, a calmness to them, a more of their, I, I was gonna say put together, but that's not it at all. It's, uh, yeah, it's just more, it's more calming. It's more, it's more leveled. It's more um, not in your face. It's a little more pulled back, a little more relaxed. And so uh, it's a nice way to end uh, a track list that is a little more brooding, a little more in your face, especially when the first, that top half with like Mafia and Frankenstein and Lifetime and stuff like that. So it's nice to kind of have a, a really nice soothing finale. But um, yeah, overall, overall thoughts on the album. Um, I, I would say the singles were probably some of the best songs. Uh, I know they're supposed to be, obviously, but uh, I really like when tr when albums have uh, really so really strong non-singles, and I just didn't feel like there were a ton of super strong non-singles. Um, and that being said, uh, while it was a good album, the sound production or the sound quality and production was great. Uh, it like it was it was pretty generic. Like let's be real, like it was a it was a pretty generic album, pretty generic house trip album. Uh, while they did kind of define the scene with their earlier tracks from 20, uh, early 2010s, um, this one doesn't feel like it's really defining. It's it's a great project and I really enjoy it, but it doesn't feel like it's, um, this is like a, a benchmark in EDM music. And, and it's not, not that it needs to be, hear me out, it doesn't need to be, um, but just if people were wondering, if they were like, oh my gosh, this is going to be, it's Swedish House Mafia, this is the next big thing, they're, they're going to be insane. Like it's, this is like, a, like it's a good album and it's a great debut album as well. It is not a, um, it is not a genre defining project by any means, I would say, or, a, and yeah, so, um, Fantastic tracks. Uh, I really liked the the more heavier stuff like Frankenstein Mafia. Um, it gets better red light. Uh, and I wasn't too impressed with some of the non singles, I would say um, some of them got a little more generic and the 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 album seemed to like get lost a little bit in the midpoint where I didn't really know what it was doing stylistically. Um, and so yeah, I uh, in the end, I really did like the project though. And um, I would 
if you haven't listened, if you weren't listening to it at all, I would definitely give it a listen for sure. But um, yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the Project Swedish House Mafia, their debut album, Paradise Forever. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And with that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.